Now we start the fourth section of the Building Databases with Redis video course. In the previous sections we discussed string, list and hash data types along with basic administration and usage tools. In this section we're going to talk about sets and related data types, that is sorted sets and hyperloglog, -log, a set organized using a special algorithm. This video of the section is devoted to sets. Let's define what set is. A set is an unordered sequence of strings. That means on one hand it is a container of elements, just like list, and on the other hand elements of a set do not have a specific order, so they don't have indices. This leads us to following conclusions. We can add elements to set, read the set as a whole, or check whether a string is a part of a set. That's all for theory. Let's move to the practice. The first thing we're going to discuss for sets is how to create sets by adding elements to them. As was said before, a set does not have specific order, so there's only one comment that adds an element to a set, as add. This comment receives a key on which new or existing set is stored and at least one string that is going to be added to set. Let's add three elements to set by typing s add my numbers 1, 2, 3. The server answers with 3, which is the number of elements added to set. Elements in set are unique strings, so we cannot keep a string twice in a set. It is easily checked with the s add command. Let's type s add my number 1 set to ensure that the server's answer is 0. Also, you can check the number of elements, which is also called cardinality, of a set with the scard command, which stands for set cardinality. Here, when we type scard my numbers, the server answers with 3. Now, let's discuss removing elements. The first way to remove elements is an sram command, which accepts a key and at least one string to remove from set and returns number of items removed by the command. Let's remove one element from the set with sram my numbers 1. Then we can type scard my numbers in order to see that there are only two elements left in the set. Another way of removing elements from a set is the spop command. This interesting command removes one random element from the set and returns it to the client. It takes only one argument, a key on which the set is stored. Let's try it on our set my numbers by typing spop my numbers. As you can see, the element was removed from the set. The next thing to discuss is reading data from sets. As there is no order of elements in Redis sets, it is obvious that we cannot get range of elements or get elements by index like we did with lists. The only things we can do is either to check whether some string is a member of a specific set, get some random elements from set, or read a set as a whole. Let's start with the first one. We can use the sIsMember command in order to check whether a string is a member of a set by specifying a key on which the set is stored, and an element on which the membership is checked. First of all, let's add some more elements to our set. Now we try two cases, when element is member and when it is not. For that, we type s is member my numbers 5 and s is member my numbers 10, receiving negative result in the first case, 0 means false, and positive result in the second case, 1 means true. The next command we are going to discuss is s rand member, which accepts a key and a number of elements to return and return that specified number of random elements from set. So we type s rand member my numbers 2 and we get two random elements. Take into account that your answers may be different here. The last thing on reading data stored in sets is to read the whole set of elements, which is done by using the s members command, which accepts only one argument, the key. Also, be careful with the command, because returning large set of results can cause a big cost on the performance. Let's take all members of our set by typing s members my numbers. 
As you can see, all members of our set are printed in the terminal. Now let's get even more practical and take a look on a real task. Creating a text cloud for the image gallery application we were working with in the previous section. Also, in this section you won't find code that inserts data into Redis in Python examples, only the code for reading data and displaying it inside application present here. So, you will have to get some practice adding data into database from Redis command line client manually and watch the results. So, a tag is a text string that somehow identifies the image gallery. For example, if you store city photos in a gallery, you can tag your gallery with strings such as buildings, lights, city, urban, and so on. Obviously, you don't want to use two equal strings for tags in one gallery, and that's why sets are an ideal way to store gallery tags. For our application, we can use compound key gallery column tags column gallery ID, which will store the set tags. You can check out the code in the save and load with GID methods of the gallery class in our application code. These methods execute the sAdd and sMembers commands in order to add elements to set and to get whole elements from set respectively. Such storages allow us to easily retrieve text from the Redis database and display those somewhere along with image gallery representation on the web page. That's all for sets in Redis. The best data type to use for storing sequences of unique strings in database. Now we are ready to move to the next video in which we will talk about another kind of sets called sorted sets.